Welcome everybody. My name is Aaron Drello. I'm one of the product sales reps here at Southern Cross. And with me, I have our rep from Infocon, Kurt Pacey. Today, we're gonna to walk you through the Infocon Irwin and how it can help with your GIS-based compliance surveys and how we can determine source gas within the field. All right, so as all of you know, uh, due to federal and state regulations, gas distribution systems must be inspected every year uh, to ensure the integrity of their systems. It has become more and more important for executives at all the utilities to be able to view the compliance information such as uh, GIS data, gas leak, gas leak data, uh, detect calibration data, and leak, leak data. So it's also important to be able to view her, uh, historical and current data uh, to show where the leak was found, when it was found, the size of the leak, and, and, how it, and if it's been fixed. So the Infcon Irwin meets compliance survey data needs by four top ideas. First, it's intrinsically safe, right? So it allows you to take the machine into any enclosed space uh, with the capability of LEL, oxygen, and toxic gas me measurements. There is an integrated GPS. The R1 allows for accuracy of collection data, storage, and breadcrumbing capabilities with the ability to automatically output a data file as well as mapping software. Uh, that software is transferred from the machine via Bluetooth, which makes, the, uh, makes it very easy to create digital copies and hard copies for ease of presentation. And then last but not least, one of the two of the levels of the machines that we'll look at today does have a gas chromatograph on board that easily allows for a fast ethane methane determination in the field. Again, it is an infrared machine, hence the IR. So it's in IR technology. The machine is intrinsically safe, as we mentioned. Some models have a gas chromatograph on board. There is GPS tracking and Bluetooth. For those folks in the uh, Northeast, the machine operates from negative four degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think you guys have to worry too much on the top end, but definitely on the low end. Uh, the instrument is three and a half pounds, which is considerably on the low end compared to the other machines on the market. Um, there are bell probes, flexi probes, and other extensions that can come with the machine. Sensitivity runs from one PPM all the way to 100% gas with an LEL function. Uh, samples at 1,000 cc's per minute, so this is a very strong pump, and response time is anywhere from three to five seconds. There are audible and visible, vis visible alarms and there is a rechargeable lithium ion battery that gives you about eight to 10 hours on a full charge. And the machine does come with a cigarette, a fast charging cigarette charger that you can plug in at lunch if you need to get an extra hour or two. So there are five versions of the machine. The S is the base model. It is not intrinsically safe, but it does have GPS and Bluetooth, which is available with all the machines you can see here. All the machines that have an X are intrinsically safe, as you can see. The machines with the G include the gas chromatograph, and the machines with the T include toxic sensors that detect carbon monoxide, oxygen, and hydrogen sulfide. The complete kit that comes with the machine will be the harness, the hand probe, fast charger for the car, your staff and bell probe, your uh, regulator for your gas tank for calibration, your uh, filter set, and your charging cables. And this is the case and what the case would look like when it's all packed up. All right, we're gonna jump right into the machine here. We're gonna go start here at the top right. So this is the gas inlet, which is where the hand probe attaches with the, the uh, quick connect here. The end of the hand probe has a little quick connect on the end of it, which attaches into the top part of the probe, which is adjustable for height. And then at the bottom, the bell probe attaches via quick connect as well. There's a gas outlet here where the gas is purged. There's a charging socket, obviously a high, high quality display here, and then a reference inlet for us to pull in atmospheric gas to test against what's coming in through the gas inlet. So startup is very, very quick. You can turn the device on. It takes about a minute to process through its self-tests. 
Um, when the machine is started outside, the GPS will connect to the available satellites, and that usually takes a minute. Um, at the end of the self-test, you must confirm the sound and light, uh, that there are, all those alarms are performing correctly. So in this video, we're just going to show the startup sequence. Uh, you get an idea for the speed and how long it takes for the instrument to start up in the morning. Um, there's a, a self-diagnostic test that the instrument does. It, it checks the pumps. It checks all the electronic components. Um, and so the instrument won't start up if, if there's a problem with it. So you wouldn't be out in the field taking measurements uh, when there's something that's malfunctioning in the instrument. So here you're just acknowledging is the light red, you're, is the light green, uh, and then shortly after that, you'll be in universal mode ready to start sampling. Next up, function test, which is our calibration. So we use the term function test instead of calibration. So each morning you'll perform a function test with a known concentration of gas, in this case, 2.5% gas. Uh, the reason we do the function test is it allows you to make sure the instrument's performing properly, and it also gives you the ability to download uh, a PDF file uh, saying that it, the instrument was function tested and it was, it's working uh, appropriately on this day. So here they see the 2.5 gas, the instrument read, the test is done, <clears throat> and now you'll be able to store a file uh, of that function test for your files. This is what the PDF would look like here. So you'll see in the top right hand corner, uh, the serial number of the machine, the software of the machine, the date and time of the function test, the graph of the function test, all, all the results, and then longitude and latitude if they're available, and then any comments. So you're now you're able to move this file from the machine to your laptop, and then it can either print it off and put it into a folder, or uh, emailed and stored wherever you might need to store it for a later access. So as far as regular survey, we recommend that you use the universal mode. This will be where, you, where your text would live day to day for the most part. This is what the screen would look like on the machine. You'll have four buttons here around the corners to use to navigate. Um, number one here is the uh, measurement value. Number two is the measured gas, so we're looking for CH4. Number three is the unit of measured value, so we're in PPM. We're gonna be measuring PPM here. And the threshold, this threshold goes up to, starts at one and goes up to 500 PPM, I believe. Um, this little circle around another circle, number six, this is very important. This is where you would start and stop your data logging for your uh, GPS tracking. So once the machine is turned on, you move to universal mode, you're ready to start. You saw how long the startup time takes, about a minute. Now you're, you're, in, you're in universal mode and immediately ready to survey. And you would press this button here. It'll ask you if you want to start data logging. You check yes, and now you are tracking all of your text movements. The, uh, measurement, vo the measurement range is 1 ppm all the way through 100% volume methane. And the pump is so strong, it will draw gas through concrete, it will draw gas through asphalt and very hard uh, dirt surfaces. I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the screen. We're gonna show a quick video of what the uh, universal mode looks like here, live. So you're in universal mode here, we're gonna connect some gas. This video gives you an idea of the response time of the instrument. Uh, we're using 2.5 uh, methane here for this video. Uh, and then you can see how it quickly goes back down to zero. So the response is very fast and the recovery is very fast. Okay, the next mode that your techs are gonna wanna utilize is the GC ethane analysis. This will be the mode that they get to a, they get to a leak. They don't know what, if it's decaying organic matter, if it's source gas. We're not ready to roll a truck, what do we do, right? So this is what the screen would look like. Again, you'll see the, uh, here you'll have an analog bar measuring from PPM all the way to percent gas. Um, on this screen, you'll also see the, uh, the battery status indicator, right? This, indicate, this, mode, this indicator here will tell us we're in, GC, in the GC ethane analysis mode. And again, we're measuring for CH4, 
and it starts out in PPM. Now, number six here is very important. There is a little sword here, it looks like. Well, I like to call it the sword with an X through it. You have to have a minimum of 1,000 PPM reading in order to start the gas chromatograph analysis. So once you have a reading of three seconds or more of 1,000 PPM, this bar will fill up. It'll, it'll ask you to keep the bar stable and green. Once it fills up, the uh, sword will become unchecked. You hit the sword button once and the testing will start. Again, you have to have a reading of 1,000 ppm or higher to run the analysis. So this video is going to depict the, the GC run. Uh, as opposed to some of our competitors in the field, uh, they use a, an algorithm to determine what the ethane concentration might be. Um, with the Inficon or Irwin, we're using a small gas chromatograph or a small column that actually takes the largest components of natural gas in a mixture, runs them through the column and separates each individual gas. So we're actually detecting methane, ethane, and propane. Um, so it, they're, they're being separated and analyzed individually as opposed to just an algorithm that may attempt to determine the ethane concentration. Um, it's very fast, something can be done in the field. Um, some of the people on this call may be familiar with sending samples to a lab and taking a period of weeks to get the results back. In this case, we can identify ethane or the presence of or not in the field in about 60 seconds. So you see that first peak is methane and it's methane only. So now we're separating ethane. We're looking for ethane to elute. And in this case, it elutes at about 60 seconds. Uh, the numbers on the bottom of that graph are in seconds. They're called retention time. So you'll see shortly uh, CH4 was identified by the green check mark. And here in just a few seconds, uh, you'll see ethane come off. You can also see the timer here. All right, so we're currently at two, we're a minute into this test, roughly. Obviously, the determining factor between other decaying organic material, that's just methane, and your line gas that contains ethane. So really, the, the key piece here is determining the presence or not of ethane. And so that peak that you see right there, it is ethane. And shortly here, the software will pick that peak up. And so you see natural gas with ethane was detected. The approximate time that took was around 60 seconds after a sample collection and, and an injection into the column. So now we can also save that data file. So you're going to get the GPS location of where that sample was taken, and you're going to get uh, the example of whether or not ethane was present or not. So this is a second test we did, and we sped it up a little faster for time's sake. So obviously the first example we showed had ethane present. That's uh, unfortunate news for the utility. It means it's their line gas and now corrective action must be taken. In this example we show uh, it's some other source. Um, it could be landfill gas, it could be other biogas, some other decaying organic material produces just methane only. So here you see the one big peak for methane. There is no ethane present. So methane gas was detected in this case, not, not the line gas or natural gas. And then again, you can store this file for your records. It's gonna give the exact location that you took this sample and the results that you identified. Yep. And this is what that file looks like. So again, you'll get the graph, right? You'll see in the top right hand corner again the, the serial number of the machine, the software version, the last function test, time and date of the test, the gases that were found here on this test. We found methane and ethane, so now we know it is source gas. We have to dig or whatever that correct, corrective action might be. Here is the uh, longitude and latitude with the address. So again, this file can be stored on your hard drive once it's transferred from the machine and it can be printed out, put into a file, or sent to uh, whatever leadership needs to see it. Okay, the last mode that we're gonna talk about today is EX mode. Um, this is the mode that you're going to use for one of two reasons, either to take inside an enclosure or to measure an LEL. Um, I know uh, a lot of companies like to have LEL measurements, so you'll see here, again, analog bar, right? 
and then the measurement volume, CH4 again, and then here's their LEL, percent LEL. So this again would be the unit that the uh, mode we would use to take inside or if we wanted to get an LEL reading and it will read from one to 100% LEL. So those are the three modes that we suggest uh, using for your day-to-day -day leak survey processes. From here, we will get right into the GPS and uh, how you tr use that information. Um, so again, it is, there is a, uh, a GPS on board and uh, the data can be used and stored for all of your breadcrumbing needs. Um, you'll be able to map out the route of the, that the tech was taken. And then again, you'll be able to transfer that data via Bluetooth. So this is the CSV file that has been taken from the machine. And then this picture here is from a survey uh, somewhere in the country where uh, we found some leaks and the GPS points were fixed, right? So this is what the map will look like on the, uh, on the Irwin app that you download straight from the website. It is free. Again, I wanna say that it is free. That's often a question we get if we have to pay for that. No, the app is free. But in the, in the data file, which comes in a CSV format. Again, you'll have the uh, serial number of the machine, the software, selected gas, uh, the last function tests, right, that were taken. And then here you'll see the date of the survey, time, longitude, and latitude, altitude, the mode it was in, and the reading, and whether it was in volume, PPM, or percent LEL. And you can see here that we found leaks and pinpointed it here right in front of this maroon car. So this is a screenshot of the application, the Irwin app, and we're in the map tab. And from here, so you will be able to say, okay, great, this is what I need to put, save in my file and uh, give it to my boss or save it for an audit. You would just click create PDF and it will create the PDF and save it to your hard drive of your, in, this, in the area of your choice. And it'll look something like this when it's PDF. Again, all, all of the output, data outputs will have the serial number, software version, date. We've got a picture of the map. We can change the topography of the map to look different, but this is the one for this. Um, you'll see the balloons here. This is the key for the balloons. So we had two yellows, we're 10 to 99, and then the red pinpointed at 0.1% volume gas or higher. And you see here the, when the measurement started, when it was completed, measurement time, the largest leak was 26% volume and measuring distance and any com comments that are needed here. So again, this can be put into your folder on your computer for survey for block A. And now it can also be printed out and put into a folder for anybody else that wants to see it. And then last but not least, this is a screenshot of uh, Esri. Because the data file comes in a CSV, CSV file format, you are able to upload this into Esri and other mapping softwares that uh, have that are, you're allowed to upload a, a CSV file into. You would have to manipulate some of the data fields to fit your configuration, but this is what the uh, this is what it looks like on Esri when that CSV file is uploaded. So any, any GIS mapping software where you can upload a CSV file, you can use the Irwin data file. So that's it. That's the machine in a nutshell. There's no need for uh, multiple machines, including a GPS, a CGI, gas chromatograph, and four gas meter. You're now able to save money and consolidate all of that into one machine. There is improved efficiency and high with high sensitivity and fast reaction and short recovery time very accurate due to the improved IR technology, easy and fast distinction between natural gas and swamp gas, and then any, uh, any of the results that need to be shared within your company or with anybody, um, it's pretty automated, it's automated pretty easily and downloaded from the machine to your computer and send it to where you need to go.